Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is Davey, uh, also known on this channel as uh, nowhere else, just this channel, as your boy Swissly. I'm here today to talk to you about World Eaters again, and this time it's part two, uh, the the part of the second of the additional information part. We're going to be talking about key units this time. I think some of the units in in World Eaters are really flavorful and really cool, um, and I'm looking forward to talking to you about it. Just a quick aside, I just want to give a, like a quick kind of interpretation of how I see this codex planning out, because let's be honest, it's probably not one of the stronger ones. Uh, melee is very difficult in the new edition. However, it's not impossible. So I think it's it's about really planning out how you're going to attack your opponent. And I think that's really important to get. get like when I, when I was thinking about this, this, uh, this, this book, how you get your head around that. The number one thing I like in this list is the idea of lots of characters, a bit of a hero hammer, right? We have lots of characters and we stick them in units and we chuck the units forward and they and they go and achieve things for us, probably secondaries. Um, it's not, you know, you don't have to tell your opponent, you have to score points. And I think that World Eaters do have that potential because they are quite fast. They, are, they can get around the board with scout moves, blood surges, things like that. So I'll refer to this kind of idea um, as I go through. In fact, actually, in ninth edition, the, the, I played a World Eaters player who beat me by a couple of points, a very good player. Um, he was um, on the Icelandic team, I think, and I really liked the way he played. Essentially, he used rhinos to missile units across the board and then, like, and basically pressure me back into my own uh, backfield. Obviously, the only way to get through that is to get around it and, you know, upset his apple cat. Um, but it's, pro it's quite an interesting place, and I think this will actually play somewhat similar. You can take fixed secondaries and what have you, such as engage, which I think quite work quite well in this. Um, maybe even doing actions, things like that, potentially as well. Because let's face it, some of these units aren't that strong. So if you've got a unit that can go in and score three points within an action in the center or doing an action in your opponent's deployment zone, you know, that's that's only a plus. I think that's, that's potentially a, a good way to use them. All right. <clears throat> On with the units. Let's do it. So key units, let's look at characters first. Angron, Angron's amazing. He kills whatever he touches, that's totally cool. Um, however, and, and you know, a first turn charge is also cool. But I think what Angron does unfortunately is it gives your opponent a lot of agency as to what Angron will kill and if, when he can come back. The reason why I say this is your opponent can screen Angron and say, right, okay, I'm gonna put this unit at the front. This is what you can charge. You can kill this, these three crew talents, for example. Um, and then the next turn you go, okay, how do I kind of, you know, how do I mitigate anger on this time? Well, he's got to kill, I want him to kill this unit. So I want to make everything else difficult and this easier to kill, you know, this this easy unit. So you're, a clever opponent will always try and, you know, decide what Angron kills. Secondly, um, I think it's really rough that like the centerpiece character of World Eaters, uh, he's, his really cool ability is it comes back to life on your blessings table, like if you roll triple sixes. Um, so the best thing that can happen to Angron really is that he gets killed straight away uh, so that he can actually, so you can benefit from that later on. Otherwise, because he comes back in your next reinforcement step, you know, if he, if, if he, if he dies turn three, are you really going to get any value back out of him? So it's it's a tricky one. I I really like him. Do I think I'd take him in? Every, if I was building a world list, I don't think I would because I really like having MSU. I like playing around and trying to get things across the board, but I could absolutely understand how someone would put Angron in their list and build around him, because I do think he buffs all the other units around them. Um, uh, he's, he, 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 he does a lot for the units around him, and I think that's really cool. Um, but 415 points, yikes. Cool, let's go into some some characters that I really like. Khan is cool, man, Khan is great. Reroll hits of a one, Room roll of one um, when he's leading a unit. Nine attacks on the charge, by the way. Minus two, three damage. Is only strength six going up to strength seven, which, you know. But um, he also has fight and death. So if you're putting a Khan into the right things, he can actually deliver quite a lot of, of damage. You can obviously plus one uh, to the plus one stratagem, et cetera, to, to wound. So you can be able to kind of reach up and do some more damage. But um for me, Angron, you're putting him into elite infantry all day long, and he's and he's, he's and at, 60, at 95 points, he's getting you your uh, he's getting your money back. Cool. 
Um, so yeah, stick him in a, a unit of berserkers, and I think that's what I'm doing with a lot of these characters, uh, with the exception of the ones that can't go in them. I think putting them in a unit of berserkers is pretty sweet. Um, Lord of Akaris. So for me, quite underwhelming. 155 points with a strength six, going up to strength seven on the charge. Minus two AP, fine. Damage two, and then the other attacks are all damage one. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just not. It's just, it just does not bring me joy. Fall back and charge is cool because it lets you and the unit is is, is leading. For example, some eight bound. I think it's it might be exalted eight bound. Oh no, it's one of the ones you can't go with. Uh, but yeah, if you put in with some elite elite guys like the eight bound, you know you're getting them to fight first. However, say you you charge into a unit, how often are you making it into your next um your next your next charge phase? You know when you can actually charge and fight first. So. I'm not totally hyped with it, to be quite honest. Um, you don't generally, in this edition, where like shooting into combat's reasonably normal, there's ways around it. I feel like um, you don't survive contact very often. Um, the best thing for me that I do like about him is the scout ability. I think the scout ability is pretty cool. You can put some units further up the battlefield, getting those getting those charges early, putting the pressure on your opponent early. But for me. I'm not saying that you're going to put pressure on them by killing them. I think you put them into really interesting places so that if you're going to take fixed secondaries like engage, you can start just going, okay, next turn they go there. And then the turn after this unit goes there, you can start planning ahead and go, right, I'm already scoring my points um, ahead of time. Uh, what else have we got here? We have a World Eaters Demon Prince. Right, cool. I really like this unit. But geez, Louise, is it that's like it gives? It has a good ability, really good ability. But God, they've made it difficult, haven't they? So it's two hundred and twenty points, which is, by the way, a lot of the points. Um, it does give everyone around him a four plus plus buff. Uh, um, uh, invul. Oh, it's pretty nice. He gets devastating wounds, which you know is so so because you have to roll a six to wound. But still, it's all right. Goes to strength eleven on the charge, which I really like because not much stuff in this in this army. Can, can get that that high up on strength, especially with the amount of attacks that this Demon Prince has. So you can do damage to a vehicle, one of the few units that's kind of reasonably fast and can do that. I say he's reasonably fast. He's slow in reality, realistically. He's not going to fly over the board like a flying Demon Prince. He, he He's kind of slow. I quite like the idea of having a couple of these in your army and rapid ingressing them and then just seeing, seeing how your opponent reacts to that because it's, it's going to hurt. The other thing I do really like about them to get the most out of that four plus plus, uh, the four four plus invul buff, is as I said before, like those missiles of units. So you've got maybe a character leading a squad of berserkers, then this guy with them, and just makes them a lot more hardier. I think that, and then some eight bounds, which I'll talk about in a minute, with that blob, and then push that forward. That's your main, um, you know, your main kind of uh, death star. And then maybe all the other units scoring points for you. But this is like, hey, it's your distraction can, can affect, right? It's like, hey, you've got to kill this. And, you know, once you've done the fill no pains, et cetera, as well, you can, you know, make that blob of stuff quite difficult to, to chew through. So very nice. Um, finally, the Master of Executions. Awesome. Cheap and strong. Gives fight first. Um, so if you're charging something that has fight first, um, like... No, so, sorry, if something with fight first charges you, you you know, you'll know you automatically fight them. So say, for example, you go into a unit and you do a lot of damage to them, then you get charged in their turn. This guy's going to make you fight first. He's going to just make you so much more survivable, helps you trade up with these units that are fairly expensive. Well, I say they're fairly expensive. They're expensive for what they do, um, but it's pretty cool. Also, your opponent doesn't really want to get a character into fight into combat with them or charge a character into combat with this guy or the unit that he's leading because uh, I think if I understand the epic challenge strategy prop strategy properly, just drop that and this guy absolutely rinses his characters. So really nice, cool. So they're the characters. I think my favorite is the Demon Prince and I, I really like Khan even though he does damage to his own unit. But if you can get him up the board, it's pretty sweet. All right. Yeah, battle line, berserkers, jackals. I mean, you 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 chose to play Worldy, it's not me, right? Um, so berserkers are limited, unfortunately. Uh, they do get a lot better. They're kind of like, what are they like? They're like the like a burger, right? 
And like a burger, you can add cheese to it, like a character, or you could add like hot sauce, like uh, some blessings. You could get the scout move. So it's like, I guess that's kind of like adding uh, barbecue sauce maybe. But in reality, these things, as they, as they come, pretty naff. So either you use them to, uh, to, to, to be, you know, a bodyguard for a character and get off the board, or you use them to kind of uh, be a little bit more durable action guys. But I, yeah, I think you take one of these for every character you have that can take him. And then after that, I'd maybe look at Jackals. So, um, you, yeah, so you, obviously there's that. The thing, the biggest downside of these guys is is they don't kill anything. Minus one AP, one damage on most of their weapons is, to be quite honest, criminal. And because you, you take them because you'll have to, right? You just have to have some of these guys in the unit. They, what kind of unit benefits from being shot at, um, but everything and everything that has a gun can wipe them out? <laughs> so this is the tricky thing about it. Um, so anyway, you can keep them alive, the stratagem, etc., is a okay with me. F uh, finally, on battle line units, you've got jackals. So a very cool trashy unit. Seventy-five points isn't cheap in context of other trash units, but these guys do work, man. Um, they've got good strength on the charge. They've got sustained hits. If your opponent does love streak, deep strike, you can chuck these guys up the board because they have sticky objectives. I quite like them. I quite like them. I don't know if. I would take, like, I could imagine a world where you take a couple of units, um, but in reality, they'd probably get, um, you know, a t-shirt cannon to death by the Desolation Marines. Um, I Maybe you start them off the board, they come in, you know, potentially do a nine-inch charge. Again, I really like engage with, with World Eaters, so maybe they can score you some engage points or some behind enemy lines or something along those lines. Um, but yeah. I think um, I think I think jackals are interesting. I think berserkers, you're gonna take them because you have to. Cool. What's next? Non-battle line infantry. Cool. The, the, I think the, the, one of the strongest parts about world is is their eight bound and exalted eight bound. So the eight bound, um, really solid profile. Scout six as well. Interesting that they have scout six because it means that the Lord of Vakars doesn't really sync too well with them because he can't point at them and give him it. He can't double it up, can you? So. Um, so potentially these guys are like, if you've taken the Lord of Vakars, then you're putting a lot of stuff up the battlefield, which you could argue is wonderful. Um, I think you probably want to layer it a little bit and not put everything on shore straight away. Uh, you know, put things out piecemeal, do what, score your points as you put things out. And then the next turn, okay, I'll, I'll sacrifice this unit this time to score the points. Um, they have a very cool aura. So very nice if you're to put them alongside a, missile of berserkers um and that's pretty nice a bit of a force multiplier also the lacerators get up to strength 10 on the charge so again like i said before injuring injuring vehicles is pretty nice um moving on to exalted eight bound very similar to the eight bounds in reality but they can get up to strength 14 with the chain fists Ooh, and then if you're using that stratagem for plus one to wound oh, let's go i'm a big fan of that um it's just getting them there it's it's really difficult um they cost a fortune, and if you don't trade, it's a massive sad face. So, what I mean by trade is kill something that was worth their points. So, even if you're dropping in, you know, buffs to charge in from the blessings, these guys have deep strike. You're thinking to yourself, okay, this might be all right. Still an eight-inch charge. You could rapid ingress these guys, um, and then you know, rapid ingress them into somewhere they can hide and be alive and stay safe then come out of there the next turn i like that but geez louise if you if you rapid ingress them somewhere in the open you are gonna you know you're gonna really feel bad once they get shot so even with the limited invuln as well like they're just gonna die so big yikes and then lastly uh obviously there's quite a few different units uh, all of them are kind of difficult to choose from let's call it that um, so you might be like, Dave, why have you chosen Spawn? Spawn, super cheap, secondary monkeys. They will get out of there. They will get you some engaged. They will do some actions. They will hold some objectives. Um, so I don't actually, I don't know if they can do actions. It's a good question. Good point. I might have to eat my hat on that. But they can, they can essentially be around, right? They can screen, they can engage, and I'm a big fan of that. All right, next one. <clears throat> Vehicles. Land Raiders, guys. 
So land raiders are an interesting one, and I'll put the Lord of Schools in the same camp as this. What these guys, I think, do is they can move up the table a bit, um, and then they keep your opponent very honest. They have to respect a land raider or a Lord of Schools because it has tons of wounds, and it has some big-ass guns that are going to really blow a hole in anything that sticks its head out and doesn't move away afterwards. Um, and I think that's really important because as your units are moving up the battlefield, if your opponent can just go where they like and they can stand where they want, it's going to make it even harder, especially with Overwatch stratagems, to keep your your little dudes alive. What these guys do is say, hey, if you, you want to stand in the open, mister, I'm going to blow your head off. So it really kind of restricts where your opponent can go. So I think having these guys, maybe <laughs> I love a lot of schools, even though it is one million points, I think that's quite cool. Rhinos, quite like them, but it depends on if you want to scout things up the board. Um, you know, what's the point having rhinos if the units, you can't scout the rhino? Uh, from the Invocatus or something along those lines. Um, I do like it as like somewhere you can you can put a Rhino down and say, right, it's going to drive into this ruin and be safe. And then it's a staging point for the next turn, get some extra movement, things like that. Do like that a lot about them. But in reality, do you want to be wasted? These are points you could put into jackals and things like that, right? So potentially not my bag. They do sit and score secondaries for you, I suppose. But one to think about, one to think about. Hellbrute's a reasonable weapon that can ac activate several times a battle round. That's pretty sweet. That's pretty good. Does only have eight wounds, though, so we'll get his head blown off. Again, it's it's the give and take of GW, right? Hey, do you want this cool ability? Good. Well, he's dead, so you can't use it. Um, last, uh, second lastly, we've got a Morlefin, so sh uh, super strong melee attacks. Like, I love this for killing vehicles, getting into knights, things like that. It's just as if it makes it there in time. Plus two to charge if it's below starting strength. So you absolutely want to synergize this with um, someone popping uh, plasma pistols or bolt pistols even into a knight or something along. I'm just saying a knight because it's very topical at the moment. Sorry, one second. So that you can then get the benefits to charging for the for the Mauler Fiend into it. So big fan of that. Obviously, the Mauler Fiend has guns as well. Um, and then lastly, the big boy himself, the Lord of Skulls. I just got a price increase, a points increase. That sucks. But, you know, yeah, again, like one of the things straight away I saw about this was, oh, you can you can juggle your, your corns of uh, blessings of corn. Um, that's, that's pretty sweet. I mean, you can bring Angron back. And then I added those two points cost together and went, oh, that's rough. Um, I could see a really fun list of just taking three of these, uh, like two of these and Angron and then some jackals. That'd be quite fun. Is he going to win you some games? No, but it's going to be real fun. The I think I could, uh, if I had all the models to my of my possession, I think I would take at least one lot of schools. It like your opponent is going to look at that and go, oh no, I need to hide, even though the Gatling gun doesn't have devastating wounds. What on earth, GW? Um, but it still has some really strong guns. It will keep your opponent honest. It really does buff improve your faction ability in terms of manipulation things as it kills stuff so overall i'm a big fan it's oc8 so it can sit in the middle of the battlefield and go come at me bro um yeah it's 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 like is it as twice as good as two is it as good as two land raiders i mean just totally on vibes yeah but i don't know on, on points really um i think i think i'd probably take the lot of skulls over the two land raiders but hey i am a lunatic cool all right so, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, it's been really great learning about World Eaters, and uh, I would love to hear your feedback, as it's something I would like to know, I would like to know more about in terms of how World Eaters will shape up in the new game. Uh, so, comment, subscribe, do all the jazz below, and of course, join our Discord as well. I will catch you later. Have a great one. Bye.